Hello and welcome to this introduction to Arduino and DC circuits. In this chapter, we'll bring together most of the concepts presented in chapters one through five by demonstrating some Arduino code for monitoring and controlling input and output pins on our Arduino. This is the sixth chapter in a 10 part series developed for a local hackerspace here in Tucson. If you wanna try using your own Arduino and multimeter, you can download the associated sketches from my website shown on this slide. The sketches are available as a zip file under the chapter six heading. So for the first two demonstrations, the wiring is pretty simple. We're just gonna connect the anode and cathode of our multimeter to the pin labeled number three and ground respectively on our Arduino. Our first sketch will demonstrate how we can convert a user-defined pulse width modulation value into a voltage that we can measure with our multimeter. The second sketch will allow us to convert a user-defined voltage to a pulse width modulation value, which is then measured again by our multimeter. Before we go on, I should clarify that although I will go over key elements of each sketch, this chapter is not really meant to teach programming. Instead, it's only meant to demonstrate pulse width modulation and how we can control the voltage of an output pin through a sketch. If you're new to programming, consider picking up one of the references I shared in chapter one. So this is our first sketch for measuring the effect of pulse width modulation by using a multimeter set to measure volts. From this point on, I'll refer to pulse width modulation as PWM. In this sketch, we'll enter a PWM value from one up to 255 and then measure the effective voltage generated by pin three. Let's go through this code briefly. The first thing you'll notice are some comments at the top of the sketch. Comments are ignored by the compiler so they will not result in any errors. Typically, it's a good idea to include comments so that someone who isn't familiar with your code can follow your purpose and reasoning. And the key to making comments uh, be ignored by the compiler is to include two forward slashes as shown here in the front of each comment. Next, even before we start our setup or loop block, we'll define the output pin as number three. This is the pin that will be connected to the anode of our multimeter, and we'll define this variable as type integer to store that value. Now we can use the term output pin any time we want to refer to pin three. Should we want to change our output pin to another value at a later date, we can make the change in this one section rather than having to specify that change everywhere in our code. Now for our setup block. The first thing we do here is specify the type of pin we want the variable output pin to be. In this case, it will be of type output, which is the same thing as creating a valve as we discussed in prior chapters. Next, we use the term serial begin 9600 to indicate that we want to establish communication with a serial terminal. It allows us to open a window from our Arduino software that will accept input and output uh, directly onto our computer's monitor. The value 9600 is a standard speed or baud rate for communicating between the serial terminal and our computer over a USB cable. We'll demonstrate a serial terminal window in just a minute. The next line provides syntax for printing characters to our serial terminal. In this case, we're asking the user to enter a PWM value between one and 255 to ensure we measure a voltage greater than zero. Now let's get into our loop. You may recall from chapter two that this is where all the real work is done. First, we define an integer variable called PWM value, and we set it equal to a value that will be input from our serial monitor using the function serial.parseFloat. What this function will do is strip any non-numeric characters from a user's input and assign it to the variable PWM value. We'll demonstrate this in a second. Next, we'll check to see if the input value is greater than zero. If it is, we'll print the value to the serial terminal window along with some text, and then analog write that value to our output pin, which is connected to our multimeter. If the entered value is equal to or less than zero, 
our else statement ensures we do nothing which will keep the previous PWM value in memory. At the end of the loop, we'll go back to the top, check for any new input to the serial terminal, and follow this routine all over again. This sketch will allow us to test different PWM values to see what kind of voltage or pressure is produced by our output pin, in this case, pin number three, which we'll measure with our multimeter. Okay, so here's our first sketch, and uh, before we upload, let's make sure that we've specified the correct board. And sure enough, we have. And let's also make sure that we have a check mark next to the correct port. Otherwise, we will not be able to upload the sketch to our board. We're going to compile it. Looks good, no errors. So now we can upload it to our board connected to our computer uh, via USB port. You can see there that um, it's done uploading, so this sketch is now embedded in the Arduino. So we should be able to open up a serial monitor and see what's going on. And we're going to include uh, a, a simultaneous photo shot of our multimeter set to volts. And now we can go ahead and enter a pulse width modulation value from 0 to 255. So let's give it the full 255. And here you can see that the voltage registered by the multimeter on that pin is 5 volts or close to it. If we put in a number that's about half of 255, sure enough, we get about 2.5 volts. And you can see that if we enter a value of 1, uh, we get a very small voltage, about 2 hundredths, which is about what we'd expect. And let's go ahead and check out this uh, parse float, see how it works. So we're going to put in some garbage, then put in the number 255 and a little more garbage. And you can see 255 is the number we're after. When we hit enter, you can see that 255 is the value that's reported, and we get the 5 volts as expected. This sketch is a little different in that rather than asking for a PWM value, we're going to solicit a voltage value. By doing some simple math, we can convert this voltage into a PWM value, which we can then use to analog write to our output pin number three. This gives us an opportunity to see what happens if we take an analog value or a voltage, convert it to a digital PWM value, and then see how that PWM value registers as a voltage on our multimeter. The voltage we enter in the serial terminal window should be within a few hundredths of the voltage that's reported by our multimeter. Now for this sketch, we're actually going to enter a voltage which is going to be converted to a pulse width modulation value, and then we can see how that pulse width modulation manifests as a voltage again on the, uh, on the multimeter. Here are a couple different values I'm trying. 5 volts comes up as 5 volts. Half a volt uh, registers is about a half a volt. And you may notice that the entered voltage in the serial terminal doesn't match exactly with the reported voltage on the multimeter. I believe this has to do with the 8-bit resolution of the pin, which isn't perfect, and the fact that we're using multiple calculations to generate that pulse width modulation signal, with each calculation creating a little bit of error in the output. This is the general view of the wiring we will be using for these next three sketches. And this is a summary of the three sketches we'll demonstrate today. The first sketch will allow us to control the blink rate on an LED by changing the position on a potentiometer dial. The second will allow us to control the brightness of an LED using our pot. And the third will demonstrate how a digital pin that isn't capable of PWM can really only be used to turn an LED on at full brightness and then off. The wiring for all three sketches is similar in that the potentiometer wiper is connected to pin A0 on our Arduino, except we will move the wire that's connected to the anode or resistor end of our LED to a selected digital pin depending on which sketch we're working with. So again, for the first demo, we will hook up our LED anode to digital pin 13, and the potentiometer wiper pin is connected to A0. To start out, let's set the variable sensor pin equal to pin A0. Now, if you're wondering how we can assign the term A0 to an integer variable, it is because the Arduino compiler understands that A0 is the same as pin number 14 on an Arduino Uno board. So the value to be stored in sensor pin will actually be 14. 
Now don't worry too much about this. Just understand that from now on, anytime we refer to the variable sensor pin in our sketch, we're actually talking about analog pin A0. A quick review, keep in mind that analog pins are actually little voltage meters that are sensing a range between zero and five volts. However, the Arduino doesn't live in the world of volts, so instead, it will break that voltage value into 1,024 small slices. If you need further details about this, please refer to the chapter entitled Arduino Integrating Hardware and Software Part 2, which is part of this series. Next, note that our LED is attached to pin 13, which we will refer to now on using the variable LED pin. Also, note that we will store the voltage registered by pin A0 attached to our potentiometer in the variable sensor value. At this point, we give it a starting value of zero. Our LED pin will be declared as output or a valve that we will open and close to control the blinking of our LED. And now for our loop. Note that our first task is to use the function analog read to read the voltage being sensed by our analog pin into the variable sensor value. We then echo that value to our serial terminal. We then turn on our LED as we did in our first sample sketch back in chapter two, but this time we will use the value of the voltage registered by pin A0 stored in the variable sensor value to delay before turning the pin off and then the loop repeats. For this sketch, what we're doing is taking the analog value off the wiper terminal of that potentiometer and using that value to set the delay for uh, blinking an LED. And if we make it blink fast enough, we can't even see it blink. It just looks like it's just on real steady. And then we can slow it down and we can see the blink rate return. For our next sketch, the wiring is similar, except now we will connect our LED to pin 9, which is capable of PWM as made clear by the little tilde in front of the 9. And here is our next sketch. I won't go through this one line by line. Suffice it to say that now we're using our sensor value from the pot to analog write the pulse width modulation value to our LED on pin 9. Again, depending on the value captured by our sensor value variable, which will be related to the position of the pot dial, will generate a different voltage signal for the LED, which will cause it to get relatively brighter or dimmer. Now for this sketch, what we're doing is actually running the LED directly off that um, pulse width modulation pin. So we're creating a pseudo voltage signal by turning the potentiometer and the LED is responding accordingly. And this gets us back to our discussion in the last chapter about sensors. Sensors are essentially calibrated voltage dividers, giving us the ability to have our Arduino create a signal in response to its environment. And finally, here's the wiring for our last sketch. The associated sketch is exactly like our last one, only this time we are sending a PWM value to digital pin 7, which is not capable of pulse width modulation. In this case, the LED will turn on full brightness for any sensor value greater than zero. For this pin, we cannot control the brightness of the LED by sending it discrete numbers between 1 and 255. And here's the sketch with the only difference being that now we're using pin 7 to control our LED. Note that pin 7 does not have a tilde in front of the label on our Arduino, and thus the pin is not capable of interpreting pulse width modulation. In other words, the pin will either be full throttle on or completely off. Now in this case, we have our LED hooked up to a digital pin that is not capable of pulse width modulation. So even though we're getting uh, various numbers within what would be considered 8-bit resolution pulse width modulation signal off the potentiometer, the LED is just going to turn on or off. Any number greater than zero will turn the LED on, and if it hits zero, then the LED will just turn itself off. 
I understand you may be more interested in working with environmental sensors for inputs and something more concrete like an LCD for output. Now that you understand voltage dividers from previous chapters, how to code input and output pins, and respective limitations of these pins, you're well on your way to developing more complicated applications for the same that not only can dump output to an LCD, but control things like motors and servos. In the next chapter, we'll shift gears a little and discuss power and work. I'll go over how motors work, talk about different ways of powering your Arduino, and after that, we'll discuss different kinds of motors and demonstrate how we can use pulse width modulation to control those motors. Thanks for watching.